Have you ever wondered, is there more to life than what we have made it to be? Are we living life to its full potential? Shouldn't this be an expectation rather than a dream? At times, our thoughts become our worst enemy from achieving our greatest potential. We have a course which empowers you to succeed in all facets of life, no matter who you are and where you want to be. We have the tools that will help you develop the essential skills to live more this 2021, where we equip you to translate the Quran anywhere. Be coached with the guidance of Allah speaking directly to you. Study with us and experience a family that desires you to succeed. Imagine what you can achieve with Allah by your side. هدى وفانا بحسنه حيانا يا نور الهدى وفانا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My dear viewers, welcome to Imam's Corner. Inshallah, we will resume our lesson of Surah An-Naba. Surah number 78 from verse number 27. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Innahum kanu la yarjuna hisaba. Sadaqallahul azim. Translation. For verily they used not to look for a reckoning. My noble viewers. In the previous lesson, we ended by speaking about certain punishments that Allah Almighty has created for those people that made the wrong choices in this life. And then those verses ended with Jaza'an Wifaqa, that these punishments that Allah Almighty has created for those that made the wrong choices is a exact recompense. Now, in the verse that we just recited and the following verse, and that is verse number 28, Allah Almighty is going to make mention of two reasons why a person will be given punishment on the Day of Judgment. So before we even study these two verses, I would like my viewers to make a firm intention and make a promise with themselves and with their creator that whatever is to be made mention in the next two verses, verse number 27 and 28, I am not going to be one of them. I am not going to be the person that Allah Almighty makes mention of in verse number 27 and I'm not going to be the person that Allah Almighty makes mention of in verse 28 because these two verses contain the formula of not being successful and that's how we should study the Quran that wherever there is a verse in which Allah Almighty makes mention of a quality that is needed we should recite it with the intention that I am going to inculcate it. And if there's a verse in which Allah Almighty makes, of some, makes mention of something that we shouldn't be doing, I should read the verse with the intention that I'm going to abstain from it. So these two verses contain the formula of failure. So the first verse is, إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا لَا يَرْجُونَ hisaba. For verily, they use not to look for a reckoning. So what Allah Almighty is saying is that they have ended up on this side, on the left side, because they did not believe in the day of reckoning. And when a person does not believe in the day of reckoning, he does not prepare for it. 
and he believes that the life in which he is living is final and absolute. As he knows in his mind or believes in his mind that there's nothing to come, so he has no boundaries in life. There's nothing to come on the other side. He does not establish boundaries. These boundaries that allow him to live a life that is approved by Allah Almighty. So he lives a life without boundaries. Now the question to you and me is that we are people of faith. If I was to ask myself first and foremost, and then ask you, do we believe in the day of reckoning? We will say yes. But there are two things that we need to be mindful of. One is the verbal statement to the question, do you believe in the day of reckoning? And one is to see a true representation of that statement in our body, in our practice. Now, I can say without any hesitation, with absolute confidence, that if I was to ask my noble brothers and sisters, do we believe in the day of reckoning? The verbal response will be, yes, we do. But if I was to ask, myself and my noble viewers do we believe in the day of reckoning and i wanted the mouth to be sealed and i wanted to understand if this person does believe in the day of reckoning by his actions then i will see that the actions are not in conformity with the statement the body has to represent that i believe in the day of judgment and how does the body represent that statement the body represents that statement when the body falls in line with what allah almighty demands i'm going to make mention of one verse from the quran in which allah almighty explicitly makes mention of what you and me need if we believe that we are going to meet Allah Almighty. Now this is a verse from Surah Al-Kahf, the Surah that should be recited on Friday, Surah number 18, and it is verse 110. Allah Almighty says in this verse, فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا SubhanAllah, it is so clear. Allah Almighty says, So whoever hopes for the meeting with his Lord. Now, I'm going to pause here. Do we hope to meet Allah Almighty? Indeed, you and me, both of us, we hope to meet Allah Almighty. But we can't go empty-handed. We can't go without preparation. So Allah Almighty says, if you do believe and you do make the statement, the verbal statement, then let him work righteousness. Number one. Amilu salihat. A'mal saliha. The first thing that we need to do is we need to commit to good work. How can a person say, I believe, and then commit to bad work. Because the bad is not left in the world. The bad is transferred with the person to the next world. The good is not left in the world. The good is transferred with the person to the next world. So all that a person says or does is transferred with the person. It is connected with the person. So Allah Almighty says, if you hope to meet Allah Almighty, Yaraju, if you hope to meet Allah Almighty, and we hope to meet Allah Almighty, then first thing is righteous works. Number two, Wala Yushrik bi ibadati Rabbihi Ahada. And associate none as a partner in the worship of his Lord. Protect yourself from polytheism. Protect yourself from shirk. Alhamdulillah, 
we do protect ourselves from shirk. I would like to share a gift with you at this moment. Nabi Akareem Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa has said, a person who recites Suratul Kafirun, Qul ya ayyuhal kafirun, la a'budu ma ta'budun, one of the very famous surahs. In the subcontinent, we say the four quls. The four quls. Qul ya ayyuhal kafirun, qul huwa allahu ahad, qul a'udhu bi rabbil falak, qul a'udhu bi rabbil nas. Collectively, they have many, many fadail, many, many virtues. Nabi Akrim Ammasa speaks about Surat Kafirun and says a person who recites Surat Kafirun before going to sleep, before going to sleep, he will die as a Unitarian, as a Mawahid, as a Mawahid. What does Allah Almighty say in the verse of Surat Al-Kahf, the last verse, 110? وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا that if a person hopes to meet Allah Almighty, then he should not make shirk. What is the protection from shirk? It is tawheed, to accept tawheed, to accept Allah to be one. And what will allow us, enable us to be Unitarians, Mawahid, and exit this world as Unitarians, it is the recital of Suratul Kafirun before going to sleep. So, it will only take you a couple of seconds. So recite Surah Al-Kafirun and the second instruction of this verse you have inculcated. The first is commit to righteousness. I would like to make mention at this point, Nabi Akareem Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لا تحقرن من المعروف شيئا Do not consider any act to be insignificant. Any act, whenever we have an opportunity, we should immediately take advantage of that opportunity. Do not, do not postpone, do not procrastinate, immediately commit to that good deed. So once again, Allah Almighty makes mention in verse number 27 that the first evil practice or evil belief of these people that basically pushed them to be from the left side on the other side is that they did not believe in the day of judgment, the day of recompense. Allah Almighty allow you and me and every human being to believe in the day of judgment and then truly to prepare for the day of judgment by doing good works and abstaining from polytheism. Second verse. وَكَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا كِذَّابًا Verse number 28. But they belied our ayat completely. Now ayat can be translated as proofs. It can be translated as evidences. It can be translated as verses. It can be translated as lessons, signs. And it can be translated as revelation. So basically, Allah Almighty is saying that the second reason why these people are on the left side today and they have been announced as failures is because they have denied the revelation. They have denied all the signs. How many signs surround us on a daily basis? How many a times Allah Almighty sends the hook to pull us back to him. The death that we see every day, loved ones, family members, distant relatives dying in front of us, young and old, men and women, from health to sickness, from prosperity to poverty, all these different changes in life in this domain, are signs that we are not in control. There is a controller above. And what we are experiencing right now, a small virus has disturbed the life of humanity. One small bug, one small virus. May it be true or not true. People are debating about that. 
but life has been disturbed. We know from all this that there is a controller above. And that controller, that master, that creator is saying to you and me, you are returning back to me. So return back to me with something that will please me. That's it. That is the philosophy of life. Return back to me with something that will please me. In return, I will please you. Don't displease me. So the two main things that will push people to the left side is not believing in the day of judgment and number two, not believing in the revelation, in the proofs, in the signs, in the evidences. Next verse. Verse number 29. And all things we have recorded in a book. Allahu Akbar. All things we have recorded in a book. This verse has to be understood completely. So we're going to spend much time on this verse. Because there are many, many verses in the Quran that are connected to this verse. So the true tafsir, commentary of this verse, will give us a complete recognition, ma'rifa, of all those verses that are connected to this verse. What Allah Almighty is saying, everything that you say, everything that you do, is recorded in a book. Now, there are scholars that have different opinions pertaining to which book Allah is speaking about in this verse. So there's one understanding that the book that Allah is speaking about in this verse is the Lohe Mahfuz, the preserved tablets. The preserved tablets. Indeed, when Allah allows us, we will study Surah Al Qalam. And this is the Surah that comes after Surah Mulk. So it's Surah number 69. 68 and Allah Almighty in Surah Qalam makes mention that he created the pen and the ink pot Noon wal Qalam and under this ayat the Mufassirun have made mention that one of the first things that Allah created was the Qalam and once the Qalam was created Allah Almighty ordered the Qalam to start writing what was the Qalam to write? It was to write everything that was to unfold. Everything that was to unfold was to be written by the Qalam where? In the preserved tablets. So the preserved tablet, inshallah, when we make it to the next side, we will see the preserved tablets. Inshallah. You will see that everything that was to unfold, was to happen, was already written in there. And basically, I don't want to go too deep into this topic because this is a topic for the scholarship. But I would like to touch upon this so it gives you some level of satisfaction that whatever is to be written in the preserved tablet by the Qalam, by the order of Allah Almighty, is dictated by the knowledge of Allah Almighty. It's a dictation. So Allah is dictating. And the knowledge of Allah Almighty is not confined to time. So Allah Almighty, wherever He may be, He has control on the past, the present, and the future. And let me add to this. For us, it is future. But for Allah Almighty, there is nothing that is future. Because He's not confined to space. He's not confined to time. Indeed, this is a topic for the scholarship. Now, Allah Almighty says that everything is preserved in the book. Lohe Mahfuz. The second opinion is that every statement and every action of a human being is preserved in his own book that is handed to the angels that are sitting on his right and left shoulders. 
So every person, the time he opens his eyes in this dunya, there are two angels that are deputed to sit on his shoulders and they write everything that he does. May it be good, may it be bad. Now when this person dies, that book is closed. That is the book that has preserved everything that he has said and done. I like to make mention here of something. There are many things that we don't do in terms of statement, in terms of action. We only think about them. For example, a action is attached to intention. How would the angels know about the intention? Because when a person commits to any work, there's an intention behind it. In the acceptance of the act, the righteous deed, intention plays a very important role. But the intention is something that is deep inside. May it be in the heart, may it be in the mind. So the scholars have said that when a person makes a good intention, there is a nice fragrance that emits from his body. The angels have the ability to smell that fragrance. So what they do is they write beside the act, it is a noble intention. There's a noble intention behind this act. Subhanallah. And when a person has a rotten intention, then there's a stench. The angels recognize the stench and they write beside that action. May it be a good action. That the intention is not sound. Then Allah Almighty, Maliki Yawmiddin, Alaysallahu bi ahkamil hakimin, wa huwa asra'ul hasibin. That creator, that supreme being, on the day of judgment, will know the intensity of that good intention. That supreme being will know the intensity of the intention. And based upon his knowledge, that is flawless, absolute, and conclusive, a person will be rewarded. Now, as I made mention, we're going to spend time on this verse. I would like to present a study that I have done in the last few years pertaining to this verse. And I believe that if you listen to this presentation attentively, so you give me your undivided attention. You will benefit from this tremendously. You know, there are many youngsters, boys and girls, that would like to drive the car very fast. We got a V8 car, supercar. And you sit in the car and you like to rev it. You like to push it. You like to see how fast it goes. But once you get onto the highway, you look to the right, you look to the left, and there's something that is bothering you. There's something that is not allowing you to press, to explore, to allow the demons to come out. If I can use that word. What is that? That is the knowing that I may get a fine. There's somebody looking at me. There may be a hidden camera. Around the corner, there may be a police. The understanding that there is authority, there is people, there are people around me that may catch me driving beyond the speed limit. And I will get a fine. Because of that fine, we drive in the speed limits. This verse that we just studied, that everything is recorded, should allow us to recognize that the speed cameras of this dunya may turn off. There may be a technical problem and you may get away with it. Or the policeman that was standing there, he fell asleep or he started to speak to somebody or he moved away from the scene. You can get away with it. 
So whatever man has created in terms of security, people may get away with it. There is a glitch, there is a problem, there is a technical problem. But the security cameras that Allah Almighty has created, designed, deputed, to preserve all that we do from the time we wake up to the time we sleep, from the time we enter to the time we exit. There's going to be no glitch, no technical problem, flawless, perfect, complete. Everything is going to be recorded, even that which is not uttered, the intention that is going to be recorded as well. I'm going to make mention of the complete system of Allah Almighty. So we get an understanding and this allows us to make the right choices. Makes, makes us choose the right things. You know, there was a teacher. He had three students. A teacher had three students. And... Uh, after teaching them for some time, the teacher says that tomorrow is your test. Tomorrow is your test. So all three came. So the teacher gave, let's say, a egg to each person. And he said to each student, <clears throat> I want you, your test is, I want you to go hide the egg. The condition is hide it in a place where no one is watching. That's it. The student said, today is Eid, what an easy imtihan, what an easy exam. We were studying the philosophies of this and that, the sciences of this and that. And Ustad, he says that you have to hide an egg. So they went and all three returned. So the teacher asked the first student, where did you hide the egg? He said, I went into my room and I found a space. I looked around, I looked at the windows and I was very confident that no one was around and I put it in that space and then I concealed it. He said, well done. The second responded similar to the first. The third student when he was asked, where did you hide the egg? He said, Ustad, I couldn't find a place. And he put his hand in his pocket and he presented the egg. He said, I couldn't. He said, what do you mean you couldn't? Your colleagues, they have found a place. Yeah? They have found a place. Why couldn't you find a place? He said, wherever I went, indeed, I could conceal from the makhluk. There was no human around. But I couldn't conceal from the Khalik, the Creator. He was always watching. Allah Almighty was always watching. Humans, makhluqat, they sleep. I can conceal from them. I can't conceal from Allah Almighty. So those stars said, yes, this was the exam to see how much of the knowledge that I shared with you truly made it inside you. The first two have failed and you have passed. And that was the catch to the ikhtibar. That was the catch to the exam. So what is Allah Almighty saying in this verse? Nothing that you say or do is going to be missed out upon. It is going to be preserved. I'm going to make mention of the witnesses that Allah Almighty, or let me say the security guards, if I can use that word. The security guards that Allah Almighty has placed around us. Number one, Makan. The land where we do something is going to be a witness. Wherever we may be, on land, on the Ard, in the ocean, in the plain, wherever we may be, wherever we are, that space, that area is going to be our witness. What does Allah Almighty say in the glorious Quran? In Surah number 99, 
Surat Zilzal, Surat number 99, verse number 4 and 5. Yawma idhin tuhaddithu akhbaraha. Yawma idhin tuhaddithu akhbaraha bi anna rabbaka awhalaha. The translation, that day, meaning the day of recompense, it will be, it will declare its information, the land, the makan, the space where we were, that is going to declare all the information because your Lord has inspired it. We'll say, how can the ground, the space speak? Allah allows us to speak with this piece of flesh. Allah Almighty will order, inspire the land to speak. That witness in itself should allow us to think and rethink before we do something wrong. Indeed, our mother, father may not be watching. Our siblings may not be watching. Our friends may not be watching. The authorities may not be watching. But the land on which we stand and we do good or bad, we should know it is watching. Not only watching, it records and then it preserves. And then on the day of judgment, Allah Almighty says, speak. And Allah inspires it to speak. And then the land speaks and says, Ya Allah, this person on this day, he did this. This person on this day, he said this. And that's why... We have understood from the Quran and the Hadith that whenever we do something wrong on one spot, we should go and revisit the same spot and do something good on that same spot. Because on the day of judgment, when Allah inspires the Ard to speak, the Ard will say, Ya Allah, at this time he did wrong. But Ya Allah, at this time he did good. So the good will counter the bad. And that's why when we establish prayer, it is mustahab, it is preferred, that when we establish prayer, after completing our prayer, we should move to the right and the left and use a new spot to establish our next prayer. Why? Because each makan, each spot, each space is going to be a witness. So you're going to have many, many witness areas on the day of judgment testifying that you made such that. We've run out of time. A recap of what we have studied today in this lesson. We started off by discussing verse number 27 and 28. And basically, I would like you to study these two verses attentively. Allah Almighty makes mention that these people that have been given boiling water and pus, no shade, no coolness. Why? لا يذوقون فيها بردا ولا شرابا. Why? Because they did not believe in the day of judgment. I said to myself and to my noble brothers and sisters, we do believe. But do we believe through action? If we believe through action, then we are true believers of the day of judgment. I attach to this verse the verse from Surah Al-Kahf, Surah number 18, verse 110. At the end of this verse, Allah Almighty says, فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّي أَحَدًا That if you truly hope to meet Allah Almighty, then do good works and abstain from shirk. The second problem was, وَكَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا كِذَّابًا These people denied revelation. They denied signs. They denied evidences, proofs. Many, many lessons that surrounded them. Nothing could switch them on spiritually. Nothing can make them make a U-turn. These were the two problems. Allah Almighty protect us from these two evil traits. Then the last verse that we are studying and we will still study next week is verse number 29. Allah Almighty says everything is preserved in a book. I made mention that one understanding is the book that Allah speaks about in this verse is Lohe Mahfuz, the preserved tablets that are dictated by or the information in there is basically from the absolute complete knowledge of Allah Almighty. The second understanding is that the preserved tablets or the book that Allah speaks about in this verse is the book that has been given to the angels and basically this book opens when we open our eyes in this world and this book closes when our eyes close from this world and eyes open to the next world.
So everything is preserved in that. I may mention that it is so comprehensive that even the intention that cannot be heard or seen, that intention is recorded by a fragrance. If it's a good intention, a good fragrance. If it is a bad intention, then there will be a stench. Then I made mention that one of the security guards that Allah has appointed that will be inspired to spit out all information regarding what has been done upon it by men or women or by any makhluk is the makan, it is the space. As a reference, I recited from Surah Zilzal, Surah number 99, verse number 4 and 5. Allah Almighty allow you and me to live a pure life. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. الهدى وفانا بحسنه حيانا نور الهدى وفانا